Today we are sitting on the floor. Why? I don't know. Don't ask so many questions, can I know? I just want to sit on the floor today. Wait, today the weather is actually so nice and I was thinking like, should I go outside and film? But God knows I'm way too lazy to actually go outside, so... Wah, panas lah, bos. Kita pakai aircon. Wait, sumpah panas ya, what's going on? Anyway, okay, so I don't know why I've never shared this testimony before, but hi, anyway, my name is Mio. Well, my hair, you're like, Marsha, watch this video when you're so untidy and your video is so, like, unplanned. Um, hello! <laughs> okay, I don't know what I'm saying. So, just, uh, so, just start the story. You're like, Meow, please start the story. Okay, I'm starting the story. Okay! Okay. So... <laughs> Why my hair always, you know if I'm not filming or I'm not going out, my hair will okay. And then suddenly when I want to film or I want to go out, suddenly my hair will start by like what? Hi, my name is Meow and welcome to my channel. So, I don't know why I haven't say this testimony before on my channel. I, I never told this testimony. Bro, I don't think I even told everyone in real life. Like, I don't know why. But then recently, I was just like thinking, ayo, so messy. Also, it's so panas like I'm waiting for my account to kick in. Anyway, so. Okay, just start the story like yeah. Mel, please start the story. I don't know, I feel like I look so bad today. I mean like it's so lighting on my why is it just how I look like at home? <laughs> anyway, leave it. Okay. So, so like backstory. Oh yo, you might just sing it. Good girl, good girl. Can we please like stand straight? Wait, legit though, you sing it. <laughs> so like backstory sicket. So when I was twelve years old, I randomly had like back pain. Yeah. When I was like 12. I don't know why, to this day I still don't know why. It happened maybe like for one week and it's like out of nowhere. And I mean like out of nowhere, like boom! It's like you're sitting here, or I was sitting here. Like imagine 12 year old me is like just minding my business, to my, I don't know, jumping rope or whatever I used to play, right? Or the oh mega whatever in my head with my friend. And then suddenly, boom! Back pain. That is how suddenly it happened. It's like ah, happening. It's, it's like, you know. Out of nowhere, for like a few days or like one week, I got a bad back pain that I had never felt before. I was like 12, okay? I was not like 30 or 21. I'm 21 now, I have pain. But it was bad. Like I remember one time I was playing uh, lompat tali. What do you call that? Jumping rope. Ah, jumping rope with my friends during PE, PJ. And I just... You know, I was jumping and then suddenly my back felt painful and I had to stop because it was painful. And then I remember one time I was like jumping like usual just at home and then I suddenly felt painful. And then even in the car, like if we would go over a bump, like this, and then it would also be painful. And I had never experienced that before. So actually, you imagine the Tiba, you go from like no pain, because I was a kid, okay, I don't have back pain when I was like 12 or that. And suddenly you go from that to like suddenly get back pain. And then after like that few days or one week or whatever, it was gone sorry that was bad gone like it was just gone to this day i have no idea what happened i don't know why my back was suddenly so mean to me for those few days but after those few days it was gone okay now that's the back story i do my hair today you're like meow please at least like look presentable i am i am presentable because i am in the armor of god here i mean okay <laughs> okay so okay that's the back story so I had a random back pain when I was 12 years old that lasted for a few days, one week. Okay? That ended there. Two, three... Three years later, when I was 15 years old, this is where the story actually starts. So that one back story, yeah, that one is prolong. That one is John Wick chapter 1. Now we go to John Wick chapter 2. So, in John Wick chapter 2, <laughs> this is when I was 15 years old. The back pain started to come back. And this time, it wasn't just for one week, it wasn't just for those few days. Like it was three years ago. This time it was for a long time. Uh, I remember it started. I can't remember where it started. Started. It just started in my neck. Oh, no, no, no. I think it started in my back, like lower back. And then so it started in one area first, like lower back ish. And it came like suddenly, like that, you know. And then like it started to go to my neck. I started to get neck pain, and I started to get knee pain, which I never experienced before. And I remember it started either in my left or right knee, I cannot remember. It started in one knee first and because that knee was weak, I started to like, you know, put pressure on the other knee to, you know, and then naturally that other knee started also to get bad. So that's how I started to get bad knees, both knees. It was such a weird sensation in my knees because it felt weak. Like, 
there wasn't only aching or pain it was like if I step it feels like my knee is loose <laughs> I don't know how to explain it so yeah so when I was 15 I started to get this bad back knee neck pain mostly it was my back and my knee that was the worst and when I say bad I know you're like meow dramatic meow everyone gets back pain like what no this is not the normal back pain. This is not the normal back pain that I ayo, so my head legit throws yeah. This is not the normal back pain where I get now, okay? This was bad. <laughs> like, dude, I mean, okay, I used to stay in my old house in Kuching and the house is double story, my room is upstairs. Huh? So I, yeah, I go to sleep, I have to go upstairs. Huh? So dude, I would like because the stairs is like you go up one landing, you go another up, one landing, you go another up again, then you reach the top floor. Dude, I would have to stop at the landings because my knees were so painful. That's how bad it was. It was pain. Okay? And sometimes I would like cry. Like I would stop and I would start to cry because it was so painful. It just got worse. And I remember at some point like I couldn't even run anymore. Like even just to run a short distance or whatever. My back would just give out. <laughs> like it, it was my lower back especially that was so painful. Uh, and when I ran. Ran. What kind of accent did I just get there? When I ran. When I ran, it's like lari, lari, yeah lah, lari, and then like my lower back would feel like this, like something crushing it every time that I, every step that I take is like poo poo. I dude, I got so scared. I thought my lower back would actually like crush. Like that's how it felt. I cannot. I know it sounds weird. Like huh? I can you know, like my knees felt loose. My back felt like it was being crushed when I take a step. It's like I could feel my body weight on my lower back and it was painful and I and I just at some point it got so bad I couldn't run anymore and I would just not run. <laughs> so so that's how bad it was. I used to cry about it a lot. I used to rant to God about like oh god it's good. Like, why is it so painful? Because I knew there was something wrong. I knew this was not normal. This is not some normal back pain, neck pain. Why are none of my other friends crying going up the stairs? You know, I'm only 15 years old. Something has to be wrong. So I knew there was something wrong. And I know it sounds fake. Like, how is this possible now? You were 15 and... 15? Wow, did I just turn American? You were 15? Balik Malaysia, boss. You were 15 years old and you were crying going up the stairs. That is fake, right? I kid you not, this is all real. Okay? I cried a lot about it. I always change my WhatsApp status, eh, about, <laughs> based on my mood. So like there were a few abouts about me complaining about my neck pain and back pain. And I just wanted to be, like, I just, I just didn't know what was going on. Like, why is this so painful? You know, why is it so painful? And I knew there was something wrong. And you're like, meow, why didn't you go and get your treatment, right? Why didn't you go see the bone doctor? Chiropractor. So I wanted to so bad, like I wanted to have an end to this. Uh, but during that time, I was my mental health was not very good, <laughs> especially when I was fifteen years old. That was like I had stuff going on, lah. You know, I had very very bad body confidence issues. I had in, I had a very active eating disorder during that time. I might have been mildly depressed, but I didn't know, uh, and just all of these things. And my mental health was not good, and my self self. The mean things I said to myself were very very bad at the time. So I just always felt like I was a burden to my family. I felt like the world would be better without me. And yeah, so I felt like I didn't deserve help or you know it would be a waste of money if my family spends money on treatment for me. All that stuff. Very heartbreaking, but yes. So uh so that's why. And also, at some point, I did actually tell a family member about it. But the problem, my friends, is that I told the wrong family member. I don't know what I was thinking. I think I just wanted to tell someone. I told the wrong family member. I told a family member who is judgmental. <laughs> and I, I... Yeah, I told a family member who would not take my mental health seriously. And did not take my eating disorder seriously. And when I told her about this, like, I just started talking about it. Like, I didn't even get to how bad the pain was Yeah, I just said like, I have bad pain, knee pain. She cut me off and said, that's normal. That's normal. And I was like, okay, I'm never telling anyone <laughs> ever anything anymore. Because I just felt so invalidated. Like, I didn't even finish my story. So then I was like, you know what, I'm just going to keep it to myself. Like, I don't want my family to waste money on this for me. 
and honestly I just felt so hopeless because I felt like there was no cure like what are they going to do you know this pain is so bad is there anything they can do I just was I had a very negative mindset on life also at that time my faith in my faith in God also was not like super strong or anything dude I literally look terrible <laughs> this video I don't know until bila I did not prepare for this I mean I did not get ready but it's fine it's fine so anyway I don't know how long did this pain last but I think it was like for a few months it felt like a long time but I don't exactly know how long lah so it was quite it felt quite long and you know I felt quite hopeless that this pain will never go away that there will never be a cure or anything and I can't do anything about it because I'm not telling my family about it so they don't know about it I think my mom kind of knew that I had back pain but she didn't know 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 how bad it was because I didn't reveal things to anyone especially not to family I don't tell my family to this day I don't tell my family anything I'm used to just suffering in silence in the house. <laughs> One night, I was like venting to my friends, like my close friends at the time, which were my Christian friends that I grew up with. And I was just like ranting and venting to them about this pain, this stupid pain. Stupid pain. I just wanted to go away, you know? Sorry, sorry, housemates. <laughs> so yeah, I was just like venting and venting and venting and this pain. <laughs> and then one of my friends, Audrey, bless her, she's very sweet. I st we're still friends today, but anyway. that night she just said like, Meow, can I pray for you? And I was like, I was very touched, you know? That someone, you know when someone say, can I pray for you? It's like you feel very touched. I don't think I really expected anything to come out of it. Because, I mean, I believe in God. But at that time it was more, like I wasn't, I wasn't like set on fire. Like, I wasn't born again. Like, I was more of the Christian that like go to church on Sunday and then on Monday say tan it, <laughs> you know. So, but I didn't believe in God lah. And then so when my friend Audrey said like she want to pray for me, I was like okay. So I don't know. I can't remember how I felt about it. I don't think I really really believe anything will change. Like you, you know, like usually you don't think something will just poof change, especially when your faith is not super strong. But I was still very touched that my friend want to pray for me. So we left it at that. She prayed for me that night and didn't think much of it. The next day was Saturday and we went to Girls Brigade and I was very active at that time. And Audrey was, this group this group of friends were from Girls Brigade GB. And so we went for a meeting and then uh, at some point at the end of the meeting, I don't know why, maybe someone called me, I was trying to get somewhere, I started running. And while I was running, suddenly I realized I was running. I kid you not, it was like I was running and suddenly I realized, wait, Wait, I'm running and I haven't run for a while and there is no pain. <laughs> Dude, like in that moment I was a shookas. So, long story short, my pain was literally healed in one night. The night my friend prayed for me, poof, gone. And I was amazed. Now has my back pain ever come back? No. I have had back pain since then, like normal back pain, neck pain, that kind of thing. The kind of thing that everyone experienced. But I have never, ever, ever since then, I have never had that type of pain again. That has never come back. So, yeah. So yeah, that's my testimony. It's a super old testimony. It's from when I was 15. 15? Like, what kind of accent? When I was 15? <laughs> So, but I just thought that I would share, you know, because I've never really, I don't think I've ever really shared that with anyone. I don't know why, I just forgot about it. But that was like a miracle in my life. And it's amazing to see how God was working in my life, even when I wasn't super faithful. Yeah, like I said, ever since then, I've never ever, I've never cried again with that knee pain going up the stairs. You know, it's never been that bad again. Like my back pain, whatever, has only been like normal back pain. Not that kind of like pain anymore. And yeah, to this day, I actually still don't know what happened. I don't know what kind of pain that was. I don't know what caused that pain. I don't know what happened when I was 12 years old. I don't know anything. Uh, like I said, I've never been to the treatment center. I've never been to the doctor. We've never went to go and find out what was going on. And this is something that my family didn't know about. And I think they'll be pretty shook if they, if they ever heard about it. Like, what? You used to cry going upstairs. So yeah, thank you to Audrey also for praying for me. So cool to look back at the old testimonies in your life and how God was working uh, in your life and through your friends and that really shows that it's good. Like the circle, I know people sometimes think that 
you know, it, it's not important to have Christian friends, it's not important to go to church. And especially when you like move out of your hometown or you're going to study, you know, you're going to study in a different state, different country, and you think that you're going to be fine and you don't need a church family, you don't need a church circle. I was blessed enough to be able to grow up with a church circle, even though at that time I wasn't super faithful, but still God was preparing me for something back then, you know, and he was still demonstrating himself through my friends, even though I wasn't super faithful, like, right? So there was still a, a purpose for that. And that really shows me that uh, the circle matters, you know, it doesn't mean all your friends would be Christian. Oh, my friends are non-Christian, it's great, I love the mix, you know, I love being around non-religious non people, you know, I don't think Christians should be in a bubble because you're not, you're not showing, you're not really, uh, like, showing Jesus there. I mean, you are, but the point of it is to show Jesus to those who don't know, so that's why we should not stay in our bubble, but at the same time, we shouldn't stay out of the Christian circle as well. As someone who has come out here and for a while I didn't have a Christian community and then after that I did now in my church and in my CF, I have seen the difference. It's it's very, very beneficial. Don't take like fellowship for granted. That could be a whole other topic, but I have heard a lot of Christians say like, you don't need to go to church, you know, as long as my faith is my faith, you know, I know what I believe and stuff. And especially, that's especially dangerous when you don't even read the Bible, right? And you think just believing in God is enough and then you don't read the Bible, you don't go to church. Uh, no, and I know a lot of Christians would, dis would disagree on them on that. Like, why do I need to go to church? Yes, you do. <laughs> the Bible says, do not forsake the gathering of the brethren. And in my experience, having a Christian community, even when I was younger with this group of friends, it is good and it strengthens your faith. So don't... Uh, don't take fellowship for granted. It's a lot easier to do it when you're not by yourself. Yeah, I know a lot of Christians disagree on that, but going to church is important. Because think about it, like when I look back, like if I didn't have this group of friends, if I didn't have this friend, I probably would have never had anyone to pray for me about this and I probably would have that bad back pain until today or and I would be like super hopeless and whatever. So yeah, that's my testimony for today. This is super old testimony when I was 15 years old. But I hope you enjoyed anyway and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Yes, I changed the channel name again. I'm sorry. Okay, I got it's my channel. I can do whatever I want. Okay, okay. Yeah, I got bored. I don't, I don't know. I just thought I just got unsatisfied again with the channel name. I was like, eh, boring yeah. So I change it again. I don't know, I might change it again. I don't know, I'm experimenting right now. I like Buddha Kuching Bah. It's actually my handle somewhere else. Buddha Kuching Bah is not my handle somewhere else. But I decided to use it for the YouTube also because I've been going by English name for a long time. So I wanted to change it up. Maybe feel a little bit local. So so give it Buddha Kuching Bah, which means Kuching Kid. It's <laughs> literally what it means. I hope you enjoyed this story and there's more to come because testimonies are gonna keep coming baby you better believe it when you walk in Christ your life will always be full of miracles and I've definitely I have more testimonies like that okay see you in the next video I think I want to change my outro to what my grandpa always says my grandpa always says the Lord bless you and keep you and keep you and give you good health I think that's what he says the Lord bless you and keep you and give you good health at all times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.